Yeah. Nick Saban's saying a lot of things about college football and the state of college football right now. And uh, as I was reading the quotes, I, was, I didn't know if it was like a, a ball sack sports quote. Sure. Or if it was <laughs> yeah. like a, a Schnefter mm -hmm. sure. yeah. or like a Pete... Uh, Owner garage. Uh, Fanel. Yeah. Oh, instead sure. of Fanel. Wrap yeah. apart. Like, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. know if it was like fake quotes or whatever, but like the way Nick Saban was breaking down mm -hmm. why and how he potentially led to retiring from college football, greatest of all time, is, is pretty wide open about the state of college football. He said, I was really disappointed in the way that the players acted after the game. You got to win with class, you got to lose with class. And then showing your ass. How many times have you heard a coach say, you show your ass, <laughs> you showing your ass and being frustrated and throwing helmets and doing that stuff? I thought, we, I thought we could have a hell of a team next year and then maybe 70 or 80% of the players you talk to, all they want to know is two things. What assurances do I have that I'm going to play because they're thinking about transferring and how much are you going to pay me? So I'm saying to myself, maybe this doesn't work work anymore. So Nick Saban actually questioned whether or not his messaging was reaching the players anymore because 70-80% of them didn't really seem to care about the family and growth and getting better and buy-in. All they cared about was, am I playing next year? And also, I'm here and I could potentially get about 70 to 80 grand more mm -hmm. from this particular place instead of you. And Saban's like, how is this? A member of a Saban football team. Yeah. You know, like he's thinking. How was this my exit meetings? He's thinking, you know, exit meetings, you usually go over, hey, how'd the season go? Like it's, as a player, sometimes, it, like it's not great. Like coaches should be honest with you. Now, all of a sudden, the players are coming to you and like grilling the head coach. It has yeah. to be a weird thing for guys like Saban. Yeah. Saban's sitting there and like the first guy, all right. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Goes in. First guy I talked to, he comes in and says, I know, odd. Next guy comes in, same things. Well, a hell of a season. We didn't end up where we wanted to be. We got to get on this. I think for you, this offseason we need to work on is I think maybe we'll get a little bigger, stronger, faster. Obviously, in the weight room, need you to work on this. You do this a little bit, it'll be good. And then we do this. And the guy goes, Okay, cool. Am I playing next year? Well, if you do all these things, let me stop you. Up, coach. Up, 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 up. Let me stop you, coach. Am I? Yep. So you're saying maybe play? What is the. Well, I think, yeah, you have an opportunity to potentially earn your way on the field. Okay, thank you. So that's a no, not good. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Coach, thanks. Um, also, so am I still expected to play or play on the same payment as this last year? Because Nevada State is telling me they'll pay me an extra 100 grand or whatever. I'm not even allowed to deal with the money situation that you're allowed to have. That's the third party, independent party. I don't even know. But yeah, I assume that could get figured out. Okay, okay. So that's a yes. All right, so hmm. no on guaranteed playing time. Yes, I want more money. You got it. All right, I'll, I'll get you into my schedule next week, actually. <laughs> yeah, same. Same as, like, get me the hell out of here. Then you hear Chip Kelly. Mm -hmm. Chip Kelly just said on the show, like, now, nah, I, I don't want it to be a CEO. I would like to be a football coach. Uh, I'm going back to be an offensive coordinator for the sake of my sanity, it seemed like, mm -hmm. is yeah, what Chip sure. Kelly was saying. And then you see these older coaches, old buddy gets out of Boston College yeah, as a head Halfley. coach. Halfley gets out, goes in there. And it's like, there's going to be the next generation of coaches that are going to only know this and they're going to go through it. But it is wild that all the college football coaches seemingly are like, this is not even the same sport anymore no. and we want to get the hell out of here. It's a wild time in college football right now, AJ. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't even know how much you get that in the NFL. Like, Think about it. like you guys in the NFL, they're not bombarding the head coach with contract situations. They know you, you go talk to the GM and everything. Like with your coach in the NFL, it's all ball pretty much. And the coach, like, yeah, you guys will figure out the contract situation. But yeah, so these college coaches are dealing with stuff that NFL coaches don't even have to mess with with their players every year, every probably three months. And then they have a lot of players have managers, I guess, that go out there and they find like if you're transfer, if you're in the New portal, that can in, go and recruiting. get bids on what you like, hey, what offers you might have from each school. Yeah, it's a different time, so you got to find a way. But with Saban saying that, so he it sounded like he was gung ho already to coach again. But then after all these meetings and everything, he's like, "Oh man!" Like he obviously must have had some kind of doubts, like how much longer will I do it? But then that really reinforced it that I'm I'm out of here. And you know, all the chatter all year, and our show even got mentioned in it because they were like, "You think Saban's doing Pat's show if he's not thinking about retiring? Mm -hmm, you think mm -hmm. Saban's doing this?" 10 years ago if he's not thinking about retiring. So a lot of people are using it as ammunition against Coach Saban that he was coming to our show that he's retiring so there isn't stability in Alabama. And a lot of Alabama people think like, oh, that's that's Georgia people putting that out. That's Tennessee. That's people that are trying to make it appear as if the future is, you know, on the rocks. That's why they've been talking about it year after year after year after year for Saban. But there had to certainly be conversations with Miss 
Miss Terry. Miss Terry. Yeah. Who they're saying might get a statue out there yeah. throughout the entirety of this transition period of the NIL and how things are going. And he and Miss Terry maybe had a, maybe they're supposed to have a spot of tea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were supposed to have a spot of tea out on the back on the lake. And instead he has to go have a meeting with a manager of a 19 year old who's on his team who didn't play last year, but wants more money and a guaranteed playing time. But he and Miss Terry can't have a spot of tea that they were able to have mm -hmm. for 20 some years. It's like, I wonder how many of those little things through the year are happening. And then whenever those meetings take place where they're dictating the terms to Coach Saban for them to come back, he goes, Miss Terry, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they go down to that house on the beach mm -hmm. and he's sitting there probably looking at the ocean. <laughs> And he turns around and there's a mega mansion behind him. And you got all the trophies up there. It's like, I don't want to go back to that bullshit. No. Get me out of here. <laughs> it is amazing, like, how many little things probably added to him just being like, I did it. Yeah. I beat the yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm going I'm to go ahead and get out of there. And I appreciate that he's being as transparent as he's being. You know, because this is good news. Him saying this type of stuff and, like, being real and transparent and talking and everything, that's great for college game day. Great. That's yeah. great for college yeah. game Like, as I'm reading those quotes, because I thought they were fake quotes, I'm like, okay, so Saban's being, like, real. Wide open. Like, he he's being very, very, very wide open and transparent. That's great news for game day, you know? It, like, the amount of peppering of Saban on yeah. game day mm -hmm. is, oh, yeah. oh, my God. It's going to be amazing. Think about me going, what do you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, to anything, basically. And if I say something and he agrees with me, oh, guy doesn't know ball. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. The, like, just the added element of a goat being up there is a hilarious process, but also the fact that he's going to be very transparent, I think is good for the future of college football. Yeah. Because education of people that aren't directly involved in it, of what's actually happening, could lead to expedited, like, change. You know, and that is a good thing, I think, for all parties. Yeah, I mean, th they need to get this fixed. Like, like this can't be like, oh, okay, we'll kind of go out through the next three to five years and kind of fix, and then make tweet. Like, they need to fix this like now, or start realizing how they're gonna. Because otherwise, it is gonna be like this. You're gonna have all these older coaches who basically are just like, you know what, this is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore. Or you're gonna have a bunch of these kind of up and coming guys who same deal. It's like like Halfley. It's like I'm not a coach anymore. I'm gonna go to the NFL. I'm okay with being like a D backs coach or a D coordinator. I don't need to be a head coach because I actually get to coach up there. Like, and then we're just gonna have probably a lot of schools where you have guys who maybe are getting head coaching jobs before they're ready to actually like as a whole. You could see how this could really like diminish quickly the overall product. Yeah, because guys are just because this is development here. Exactly, yeah, these are development years. This is getting better as humans mm -hmm. this is getting better as athletes this is getting better as football players and it's like that all needs to be reminded yeah i think like hey we're still developing as humans at this time you know think like, of you from think of you from your freshman year to oh. your senior in college like you're a different human being i feel like well and then you think about even five years removed from oh, living like completely. you know what i mean like you're yeah. you're so we got these 19 year olds and 20 year olds and 18 year olds and 17 year olds yeah even, having to make decisions that like 28 year olds would probably 20 normal now granted i know they're being introduced to things much quicker nowadays business wise but it's like we can we got to be able to it's not players don't deserve money i am on the complete opposite side that you could check my resume loud very loud about that since literally the first time i ever got a chance to speak or learned about it in my first ncaa meeting my freshman year where they went through this pamphlet about how we're getting screwed out of money pretty much is all i heard the entire time for how long was that it was like three hours it was like three hours oh, the worst those compliance meetings were the worst things ever it was like a three hour four hour meeting and i'm just i hate these you got a bunch of suits just coming in here just telling us how wrong we are about everything and how great they are seemingly and then all you think to yourself is we're making all the money for all of you and i see pat white sitting right there and steve slayton right there and they just built a whole new campus mm -hmm. and i got this guy with glasses on telling me <laughs> amateurism <laughs> is the reason why they can't make it in my okay well it seems like you are an amateur of business because this is not how this goes so i have been an advocate for players utilizing themselves to profit like a pianist could who's in college mm -hmm. like people that are actors or singers can while they're in college and do their entire thing like that is all i'm saying but what we need is we need to protect players too we need to protect the student human athletes as well not only financially but them as humans like 
putting them in situations where they could potentially get like very sketchy contracts like that could affect your life forever. Like people signing away 20% of future earnings yep. and shit as 17 year olds. It's like, there should be some sort of, there has to be, there has to be some sort of, this is what a contract can look like. This is what this is worth because the people don't even know what market value is for anything. So people are agreeing to terrible deals just because they feel cool getting good deals. It's like that whole shit needs to get figured out. And with that being said, I don't know how. I no, don't, I no, don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Nobody does. I don't know how but, that gets figured out. But every team should have like an Andrew Brandt or like a general manager. The head coach type. should be like a GM almost. Well, but but even that, it's like you're putting too much on him. Like bring no, someone. No, but don't else coach. In. Like head coach is like GM, and you hire offensive head coach, OC, defensive head coach. But then you end up with what happens with Chip Kelly, where these guys don't want to coach anymore. Don't no, you that's want what I'm those? saying. I, I don't think it's a football coach. I think it's a scout that you give like a GM job right. to. Yeah, exa yeah, exactly. Like every team gets a GM. And like that, that would I help. think that's who the head coach is going to become, though. Like I think the head coach that is, sucks. I that, think that's what it, it will have to be, unless you just add a. Yeah, you just add a role that's just GM, just I like mean, an NFL franchise. Fundraiser. Fundraiser is the number one job of a head coach in the NFL, or in college football, I feel like. And they don't want to do that. Like, that that feels like an NIL I thing. At, I was at a fundraiser last night. A lot of money in our room. Yeah. Mm -hmm.